Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse, and this is my fourth video on similar triangles. Um, this is one, uh, another unique kind of problem with similar triangles uh, that I'm happy to be calling the one side splitter. Uh, why do I call it the one side splitter? Because if you look around the big triangle, this side here is getting split by this little segment right here. So this H point H is cutting this triangle, uh, this side of the triangle into two different sections here. Um, and so it's really important that you understand um, this, the way to solve this problem. This is probably the most confusing of any of the methods um, when it comes to similar triangles. So this segment right here is 9, and this segment right over here is x. They are two separate segments here. Uh, I've got this problem on the next page, so I'm going to solve it on over here. Um, so it says one side splitter, it, one side gets split. So I always tell, I'm going to tell my students, um, or I'm telling my students to draw two separate triangles here. Notice, I have a small triangle and then I have a big triangle. So I'm going to draw a small triangle. My lines hope they're going to be straight here. And a bigger triangle. And then I'm going to match up uh, these numbers and variables here. Well, this side is 10 and this is x. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, the left side here is 20. But what is the overall length of this whole side right here? Um, is it 9? Is it x? Is it 9x? Or is it 9 plus x? Let's think about this. This is the length of a segment. This is another length of a segment. If I combine these two segments here, I would add them together. So make sure this is 9 plus x. Most of my students probably would start, straight off the bat make this a 9 times x. That's not correct here. We're not multiplying this. We're combining two segments. They're going to combine to be one large segment here, and we're going to do that by adding. And now that I have two triangles here, we can now set up a proportion and solve for the missing sides. So I'm going to set up a proportion. Again, I always do small triangle over big triangle, and so this is definitely the small one. This is definitely the big one here. Well, what corresponds with the 10? That would be 20. What goes with the 9 plus x? That would be x. And so I'm solving for x, so I'm just going to put the small triangle is the x. I'm just going to put an x right here. And what corresponds with the x? Well, that is 9 plus x. And then what's another uh, a dimension that I know in the small triangle? That is 10. And what corresponds with 10? That would be 20. So this is my uh, proportion here. And I tell my students, whenever you come across these problems, put parentheses around this section here. So this is 9 plus x in parentheses. And when I cross multiply, it's going to simplify the problem. So I have a x times 20, and then I have a 10 times 9 plus x. Sorry I'm kind of squeezing this in, but that's just kind of how it's going to be. Uh, this is 20x. 10 times 9 is 90. It's 20x. is 90, and then 10 times x is a 10x. Now I just need to isolate the x's here by subtracting 10x on both sides. And you get... This becomes 10x, and that's going to equal 90. So now, solve for the missing variable, or sol sorry, solve for the variable, and x is going to equal 9 in this problem. So 9, or x is equal to 9. Again, you always want to plug that back into the variable and cross multiply to see if it's true or not. But if I were to do that here, this would make, make this problem, uh, this video a little bit too long for me. Um, jumping over to number 6. Uh, I'm going to erase this right here. Uh, if you need to pause the video or ask your teacher to pause the video, then you can to view what I just did here. But I'm going to clear this side up so I have workroom uh, or space to work on this problem here. So again, this is a one side splitter. One side is getting split. So I'm going to draw two separate triangles. I've got a small triangle and I'm going to have a big triangle. Uh, that's a ugly looking triangle. Sorry about that. Hopefully this is going to be better. It's a little bit better. Sorry it's not the most pretty thing in the world. Uh, but you get the idea here. So the dimensions on the small triangle are 15 and 7. The dimensions on the big one, well the left side is 19. What is the overall length of this one here? Again, we are combining these two segments here. This is x plus 7. So this bottom here is x plus 7. Don't ever multiply here. You will never multiply. Make sure you add here. Now, if I set up the proportion, I'm going to 
uh, compare the small to big. I always use small to big, so S over B. Um, I'm solving for X, so X is our, I'm going to put in first. X is going to be on the bottom because it's the big, it's part of the big triangle. What corresponds with X plus 7? That is going to be this 7 here, so that's going to go above. What corresponds with the 19? That's going to be the 15. Um, so what needs to go across from here? A number from the same triangle. So x plus 7 and 19 are on the same triangle. Those go together. And then we have uh, 15 is going to go on the top because that's the corresponding side. Sorry, I'm kind of mixed match colors here, but that's just kind of how it worked out. Um, so I'm going to cross multiply here. 7 times 19. So 7 times 19 equals uh, x plus 7, oops, not, not correct, so 7 times 19, equals, make sure you put parentheses here, so I have um, 15 times x plus 7. What is 7 times 19? Uh, 7 times 19 happens to be 133. And that's going to equal 15 times x is 15x. 15 times 7 is 105. Sorry, I'm kind of squeezing that in. Uh, and then right now, uh, my goal is to isolate and solve for x. Well, what do we have here? I'm going to change to blue. I need to isolate the x here by subtracting 105. And I have 133 minus 105. is, sorry, I'm plugging this in my calculator right now, is 28, and 28 is equal to 15x. Um, now my goal is to solve for x here. I'm going to divide by 15. So 28 divided by 15 uh, happens to be right around 1.86 repeated, and that is x. Um, you can keep it like this, but I'm going to tell my students to round this to the nearest tenth, so I would get roughly 1.9. And so this should be the right answer here. Um, sorry I didn't do the math earlier. I forgot that I modified this. So anyways, hopefully this helps you understand that when you come across a one side splitter, you want to draw two separate triangles. Once you draw the two separate triangles, cross multiplying and solving and setting up the proportion becomes a lot easier. Remember, always add these two together to get the overall length in the big one. Make sure you add. Do not multiply. Uh, anyways, hopefully this helps you understand these kind of problems better. And have a great day.